What up? I'm B, and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great Thursday today, and I am super excited to be able to be hanging out with you. There are some, some topics we're going to go over. There's not really a ton happening in the YouTube in the YouTube world right now, and I don't necessarily love to make mountains out of molehills, so there's not a ton that we're going to go over or anything really in depth unless there's something else that comes up throughout the course of the stream. So we're just going to hang out for a little bit, let people have some time to get on, have a quick chat or little like weekly family meetings, if you will. So if you are in here, say hi. Oscar said, hey, change of location. I see. Yeah, I did last week's video and part two that's going to be coming out next week right here on the couch. And I was just like, in my room that I usually film my YouTube videos in, I also have my desk from work in there. And I feel like since I've been working from home so long, if I have to be in there for one more minute, I'm going to explode. Also, I got a new chair for that room because right now the one that I have is not comfortable. So we're switching it up for a little bit. I'm sure we'll be back in there at some point eventually. But right now, we're on the couch. Druggy Vibes, hi, my day is good. How's your day? Hi, David. Hi, Sinead. Hi, Count Von Lilson. I'm finally being able to say your name like right when I see it because I used to have to like squint and be like, what does it say? <laughs> K-Lark, hi. Hi, Toodles McPhee. Hi, Sarah Rose. Hi, Siobhan. Hi, Chandra. Uh, Joyful Noise 93. I uh, can't believe I'm catching a live right as it starts. Yay, I'm excited that you're here right on time. All right, Brianna. Hey, haven't been in a live in a while. Glad that I made this one. I'm glad you're here too. Sinead said, I like the change. It feels so cozy. It is kind of cozy. I got, I like went all out and bought a whole bunch of new pillows. I, I like went wild on Target because we found these, my husband and I found these ones in the store and I was like, I need all new pillows and curtains in the house. And so it's so cozy in here. Um, Dawdling Lemon said, I read the title and couldn't help in all you, Shane, come out of my mouth. Goffy please said hi everyone. Tools McPhee said the couch setup is even more of a chatting with friends vibe. I think so. I think it's like I don't know, I like it. The chair that I got for the desk is gonna be a little bit more cozy too, but I also feel like sitting at a desk is very profesh. So this is a lot cozier and like like you said, chatting with friends. Jordan said I'm gonna watch this while cleaning my lizard's cage. Very nice. Joyful Noises 93 said, yes, Target has the cutest stuff. It really does. Like, I, I got so much stuff from there, and I love it. It all finally came in. They sent it in probably five different packages and different shipments, so I finally have it all, and I love it. David said, haven't been in a live for a while. How was your day? It's good. I'm glad that you were able to make it to this one. Um, Evie Morgan said, I made one. I usually miss lives and have more homework to do, so I won't even get to see it all live. Oh, I'm sorry, but homework is important, so definitely focus on that first. All right, so, uh, Yvonne, yes, the live just started, so we are literally just now getting into the topic. I asked you guys um, if there was anything that you wanted to talk about that was going on, and so from the responses from that, that's what we're framing the live around. Like I said, there's not really, well, there is some stuff going on, uh, but not necessarily the stuff that we usually talk about, and so I didn't want to make anything a huge deal if it didn't need to be and have, like, a huge in-depth discussion if we didn't need to, but I also like hanging out with you guys, so I don't know how long this will be, but we'll have a chat, you know? Mm, Brown said, currently making some chili, and I want to be finished already because I'm so hungry. I love chili. Hi, Grace. I'm glad you're in here. All right. So the first topic of discussion is, is Shane Dawson coming back to YouTube? And the reason that this is coming up is because he was recently in one of Ryland's videos. There's a video Ryland posted like two days ago about how he was redoing their bedroom and Shane was in it in the beginning. They're talking about how he doesn't like to hang out in there. Um, he, he was in it for like a few minutes in the beginning and then at the end it showed him chilling in the bedroom and Ryland was like, yes, success. And so, um, mm, Oscar said, I didn't know it was old footage apparently. Yeah, so in the lower left hand corner, if you watch the video, it was filmed like June 15th. So 
yes, it is old footage, um, but at the same time, I feel like that was right around the time that all of the drama was starting to come up, so kind of interesting to include it and to put it out there. Chrisic said the move was bold. Yeah, like, I really do think it's kind of testing the waters to see how people react to Shane coming back, and I don't know, like, I don't know how I feel about it necessarily I feel like with Shane um we've all called him out for those bad things the things that we don't like that he did and the things that we don't like about him and so at this point he can change or he cannot you know he can choose what he's gonna do but as far as what I'm gonna do is not watch him you know I don't have a problem well I have a problem with Ryland publicly, the way he reacted to everything, but you know, I'm not going to get into anybody's relationship. You got to do what's good for you. But even before any of this, I didn't watch Ryland's content, so I'm still not going to watch it. You know, it wasn't like I had a problem with him before any of this came out. I just never watched it. And so I'm still not going to. And then if Shane puts anything out, as a like as a viewer of YouTube, I won't watch it. If we wanted to have conversations about what he's putting out or like if someone says, hey, he put this video out, I don't want to give him the view, can you review it? I would do that. But as a general consumer, I wouldn't. Oh, hi, TRN. I'm glad you're in here. Corny said they made some remarks that show they knew about the comments they were getting about that time. So weird that he left that in. Yeah. Sinead said, I feel like Shane has had his time on YouTube and maybe he should move on. I think that's a really good point, Sinead. Um, I don't necessarily know that YouTube is made to be done forever, if that makes sense. There are a lot of people who get a start on YouTube or have a time on YouTube. There's a lot of conversation about how this is never guaranteed. It's not as if you have contracts. You're not guaranteed to have any amount of time or success on YouTube. It is all up to the content you put out and how it was how it is received. And I feel like Shane had his time on YouTube. He definitely made his money and now it might be time to move on. Because when it when we really think about it, we're not going to know if he's changed. We're never going to know. And when you're accused of the things that he's been accused of of being racist, of being a racist apologist, hanging out with racists, the inappropriate jokes towards kids, and the interactions that he had with his cousin, and the picture of him kissing an underage fan. It's like, underneath all that, we will truly never know if he has changed. If he took everything to heart, if he has moved on and become a better person. And so, there's not really a good way to move forward from that. There's never going to be a way to move forward that's going to make everybody happy. And also, I feel like so much of his YouTube experience has been toxic for a lot of people. And so you had your time, you made your money, maybe move on to something else. You know, he, he said he wanted to be a director. Maybe he could actually try his hand at that and try to make videos and movies that are actually good instead of trying to be as shocking as possible. Siobhan said PR team is doing test runs. Yeah. Chrisic said they honestly should never have kids with the way they're acting. Uh, Like what people condone says a lot about them. Yeah. I mean, it would... It's interesting. Like I said, I don't want to judge people's personal lives, but... It is concerning. A lot of the things he said and did truly were concerning. And I think I tweeted this out at one point. You know, it's like, even if he never acted on anything bad, even if he never actually physically did anything bad, this was before the Willow Smith video came out, even if he never acted on anything he said or any of the jokes that he made, would you feel comfortable having him around your kid, around your niece, your nephew, your little sister? Like, your friend's kid, your cousin, would you feel comfortable having him around that person? And if not, I feel like that says a lot. 
Rana said, yeah, same here. I think I'm done watching his channel. Like, I liked his content, but I don't know if I can truly support him anymore. Kaylin said he just needs to write a formal apology and then take the L and move on. Count Von Wilson said, I feel like he'll still have some sort of audience, but it'll be interesting to see how bad the backlash is. People will do mental gymnastics to keep their idols. That is a really good point. Yeah. I mean, I do think that there will still be people who support him. Obviously, there are still people who support all kinds of terrible people on the internet. Um, but I do anticipate a good amount of backlash if he officially comes back. Dodling Lemon said, I remember seeing Ryland's vlog he posted where he was taking, or he was talking to the camera about Shane and the entire comment section was, we should forgive Shane. It was so long ago. It made me really sad to see. Yeah. I mean, if people want to forgive him, I, I guess, like, if they still like him, that's their right to their opinion. I just morally, I think it's, it's murky. It's murky to forgive him for something, especially if you were not somebody who was affected by what he did. You know, at the end of the day, you can support whoever you want to support, but really think about if the person you are supporting is conducting themselves in a way that warrants that. Is this the kind of person you want to support? Is this is this a good person that you want to, you know, when you watch somebody's YouTube video, you are financially supporting them. You are giving them money. And so do you want them to have this platform? Do you want them to be able to have the reach that Shane has? Do you think it's right? If somebody in your personal life acted like that, would it be okay with you? It's just something to consider if, you, if you're wanting to forgive him. Krizik said, Stan culture is a cult mentality. It really is. We've seen that a lot. TRN said, a lot of good creators eventually leave YouTube and move on, even without scandals. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, and I think maybe he want, if he's wanting to come back, it's probably because he has been on here for so long, and so maybe he doesn't know what he can do outside of it. And that's another thing to consider with a lot of YouTubers who drop out of high school to pursue YouTube. And not that I don't think you can be successful without a high school diploma. Like I know plenty of people who are, but they drop out without a plan for any sort of further education or any sort of, you know, work experience that could make them successful in a world where they're not on YouTube if they don't get another social media job or another like a TV gig, you know? So you have to kind of appreciate the success while you have it, but also understand the fact that YouTube's been around since what, 2006? We don't know the average longevity of a successful YouTuber. How long are you able to be successful and to be fulfilled on here while you're doing it? You still have to consider life outside of it. Sean said, didn't Andrew officially disconnect from him too? I saw someone say he took something out of his bio. And Krisik said, yeah, Andrew disconnected from him too. That's crazy. That's really interesting. Sorry, I'm scrolling back up because you guys are commenting and I love it, but I'm trying to catch up with you guys. David Kerpik said, uh, like Shane was here around a decade, maybe more, but he had his cup of coffee on here, so it's about time to leave YouTube and focus on something else. Yeah, that's a good point. Druggy Vibe said, let's like the live. You guys are so sweet. You guys always remember to like put that in the chat and I always forget. I'm like, oh yeah, I should ask them. <laughs> if you're liking the live, give it a like. Kaylark said, when you're given a platform, it's your responsibility to recognize that you are a role model and you should model behavior you want to see in the world. I agree. Like that's the approach that I would love to see so many people take, but it is interesting because people who don't recognize that or don't want to be considerate of that, who say like, I just want to do what I want to do and I don't care. Like I don't want to be a role model. A lot of them get so successful because people love to see the train wreck. Like, it's why we love reality television. It's why Tana Mojo it was, at one point, one of the biggest creators on the platform. It's why Jake Paul has found such success. People love to see people act like that for some reason. You guys said, how'd you get this deep into the conversation in nine minutes? I don't know. 
time flies when you're talking about real serious stuff sometimes. <laughs> Courtney said, some suspect that Ryland uh, posted this old video to show their audience Shane's the Shane before all this really came out, so they would rethink leaving and give him a chance for his potential comeback. Yeah, I mean, I think it, somebody else said it's like a PR move, and I definitely believe it. Oh, hey, Darnellville. I'm glad you're in here. Taryn said, mucky, and is a, mucky is an appropriate word to use for sure. And yeah, someone like Shane is not welcome around my kid. Right. It's like, even if he never did anything, if he never acted on it, is that still somebody you'd want around your kid? And in terms of, like, being friends with not only his shadiness and, like, the, the old Shanene content and all of that, like, he did it for comedy, okay, but today, he is friends with somebody who is racist. He is very publicly friends with somebody who is obviously, like, continues to act in racist ways and doesn't care that he is doing it. And so for me, if I was friends with somebody in real life who was being blatantly racist or was friends with, like, a raging racist, I, I would reconsider the friendship. I would not want to be around that person because I'd be like, if you're okay with that person being close to you, if you're okay associating with that kind of person, that's, that's uncomfortable. I don't like that. You know, that's not okay. Kaylin said, I wonder if the mainstream TV industry even knows about this. I don't think they do because there are so many things. Like, I talk to my mom all the time about YouTube stuff, and she's just like, oh, my gosh, what? <laughs> I mean, there are some YouTubers who are in the mainstream news, like James Charles and stuff like that, but I don't think they know half of the stuff that goes on here. The Dark Side Boomer Melissa said, hey you, again, this is Melissa Cross, hi. <laughs> so I just found something out about Shane just today, ooh. Uh, but if you don't, you should have, he talked to Susan about it, uh, so he might be positioning for a kind of comeback. Yikes. Caitlin said, which IRL friend are you talking about? Trisha, Tana, Jeffrey, or all of the above? I was talking about Jeffrey, um, but Tana too. I mean, they're not, like, friends anymore publicly. Like, they... Shane and Jeffrey very publicly went into business together. And with everything that has come out about Jeffrey and has been said about Jeffrey for as long as he's had a social media presence, you know what he's accused of and he hasn't learned or cared to, I mean, even if he's not intentionally racist, which I, I don't know that that's the case, but even if he's not intentionally racist, if somebody tells you that something you did was insensitive or that it was racist or that it was wrong, your first response shouldn't be, no, it's not. Like, that wasn't wrong. That's totally right. It should be, can you explain it to me? Can you help me learn? Like, if somebody really is ignorant, you would think that they would want to know so they could change their behavior. But Jeffrey doesn't. And kind of the same with Shane. Like, yeah, he doesn't make those jokes anymore, but he's still friends with somebody who, I don't like to say somebody's racist, but, like, is a racist. Uh, Chris said how they continue acting like he changed without him seriously being investigated is what's messed up for me yeah and I don't know anything about the investigation I mean for me it's like I think we're at a point where if people came out to say that he had actually Shane had actually physically done anything to them they would get a lot of support so I could understand maybe in the past not wanting to come out but now there would be a culture where people are willing to listen and so I mean that's not to say that nothing ever happened but I think if there had really been a physical interaction we might have heard about it right by now you know and so an investigation may have turned up something, but I also don't know what they would have found because I definitely think we would have heard a little bit more 
if this was an actual thing that was happening, but that's just speculation. Dawdling Lemon said, let us not forget that Shane made Shanae merch and wore it and promoted it in 2018. Facts. Kaylark said, I have cut off people for much less than what Jeffrey has done. Like, it's really not that hard. Yeah. Um, like, I literally have somebody in my life who I'm trying to be very vague about it. If I say it and they see this, they're going to know who it is. Um, but yeah, I have somebody in my life who has said much less than that. And I just do not engage with them. I, I don't interact with them at all because it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to engage with you. If you want to have a conversation and you're open to learning about why the things that you're saying aren't okay, let's have a convo about it. But if you're so stuck in your ways that the only way we can approach a conversation is with you coming so defensively, it's not going to be a constructive, like productive conversation. TRN said, maybe MSM audiences don't know about the YouTube shenanigans, but I'd hope the industry people know about him, especially with his movie, Not Cool. Yeah, probably. I think they, they did like some sort of, it's like behind the chair reality show. So I think people in like the movie making business would probably have somewhat of an idea about him. And maybe that's why he's not moved into that business because he was such a terror on the set of Not Cool, and he's like, these actors are lucky to be here. <laughs> Yikes. Mm. The Dark Side Boomer, uh, Melissa said, but he could lose two-thirds of his subs and still be huge. Very true. Cassie May said, new subscriber here, uh, just to say hi, and I appreciate how straightforward you are. Thank you, like, and thank you for being here. Feisty Penguin said, it'll be interesting to see how the mainstream media will change once Zen Gen Z is old enough to work in it. True. That'll be really cool. Nikki Chuckle said, thank you, B, for discussing this. Thank Oscar, because he suggested it <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> but you're welcome. Chris said, honestly, I don't know. I wonder if Lucas will talk about blocking Shane on everything after Shane assumed he was trying to hook up when he was like 15. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. <gasps> oh my gosh, I totally forgot that that happened. That was weird. Like, even if it was just a joke, what a weird thing to say when he was like, oh, he's trying to hook up. Like, he's telling me to come to his hotel room. He's a teenager, dude. Feisty Penguin said, oh, well, this is me during my family wanting to talk politics this year. It's like, nope, nope, <laughs> we're not doing it. Uh, Taryn said, is Lucas Fred? Yeah, Lucas Cruikshank, I think is how you say his last name. Um, mm -hmm. Shane told a story about how they were, like, DMing, and then Shane made a joke about hooking up because Lucas invited him to his hotel to, like, hang out. And he goes, oh, are you trying to hook up? Are you trying to show me your member? And then uh, Lucas blocked him, essentially. Dawdling Lemon said that Lucas thing is so disgusting, he was half his age. Yeah. So weird. Siobhan said, can we talk about Lohanthony thing? I don't know if y'all ever did at any point. I do not know what you are referring to. What's up with that? I'm going to make a note to look into it, though, Siobhan. Because I don't know what the deal is with that. Yeah, Ava said, I would have felt so bad uh, for Lucas. I would have been terrified if I was him and a kid. Right. Oscar said, oh, that's a whole rabbit hole. All right, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll look into that later. And maybe we'll talk about it. But this brings me to, I see your comment, Chrisix, but I don't know any details about that. So I don't want to talk about something that I don't know about. Um... But it reminds me of, not reminds me, this happened today. The next thing I wanted to kind of shift into was what Kaylin said about how she heard, like, the best way to cancel somebody is just to stop paying attention to them and, um, like, what's my opinion on it. And honestly, I think that's a fair statement. I uh, often toe the line between 
needing to talk about something because not needing to but wanting to talk about something because it was inappropriate and we should have a discussion about it and and informing people but also at what point does it get to a point where it's no longer effective and where it is just adding fuel to the fire and uh Okay, so two things before I move on to it. Kaylarg said, so Shane wants to come back to YouTube. Would we feel different if he made an accountability video in the next month versus waiting a year? No. At this point, I people can do whatever they want to do, but I don't like Shane at this point. I don't want to watch him and I won't support his content. Whatever anybody else wants to do is totally up to them, but me personally... I wouldn't care. Like, I'd be like, you do you. I hope that internally you have changed for, like, the fact of what you were doing is damaging and hurtful to others and probably hurtful to yourself. So hopefully you can work on that and, and get better. But just because somebody tries to change or somebody makes up for their mistakes doesn't mean that we have to still support them. We can say that's great for you, but I'm distancing myself. And that's essentially what I would be like. That's what my take would be. And then UA said, will you be talking about Tana's apology? The answer to that is no. Um, I've talked about this on Twitter and a little bit in um, my members only stream, which sorry, you guys, that I posted a, hey, when would you rather have a stream to the public? I meant to do that on my members only tab and it was a long day at work and I didn't realize until a few hours later. So I apologize if I confused any of you guys. Uh, but as far as Tana goes, her apology isn't for me. It's not meant for me to accept or deny or really to critique because my overall statement is I think it was bad and I don't think it was sincere and I don't want to make a video and like muddy up the search results for other people who really have the authority to talk on it and so I just don't feel like it's my place Bob said OMG hi queen glad I could be here yay I'm glad you're in here too Kaylar said I feel the same I don't want him to get to a place where he wants to harm himself I feel like it would be easy to get to that point but I'm washing my hands clean. I don't like him. Exactly. You know, I don't want to continually tear somebody down if they're trying to do better. This is just like a general statement. Um, you know, I can, I, I can call you out and want to see you do better and hope that you do. And if you do, that's great. But at some point, I've got to love from a distance. I don't have to continue harping on it, but I also don't have to support that person, even if they are changing for the better, you know? That's a, that's a good rule of thumb for anybody. Even if you call somebody out in your personal life and they do show you that they're doing better, great. I can love you from a distance. Um, but yeah, so those were the only things I wanted to talk about with those questions. And as far as like not giving people attention, like I do think that that is going to be the most effective way. If you really have a problem with somebody's behavior and you don't want to encourage it and you don't want to add fuel to the fire, at some point you have to draw the line of me talking about it isn't changing anything and so there's no point in continuing to talk about it. So this reminds me of Trisha Paytas. I made a few videos about her. I, I think that we had good conversations in those videos. But after a certain point, Trisha enjoys it. And so as long as people are talking about her and as long as she's doing ridiculous things, this is just an example, um, not anything specifically about Trisha, but it's like, as long as she's still doing those things and people are still talking about her, it's still financially supporting her and making even more people find her. Yes, yeah, she's a massive creator, but the more people talk about her, you know, there are millions of billions of people on YouTube that may have never heard of her until maybe they hear one video or they see one video from a creator that they like and they're like, oh, I got to check this Trisha person out. And so that's kind of how it, I feel with Tana too. At this point, Tana has made it clear that she does not care about being a good person. 
And so if that's what she wants to do with her life, okay. I kind of gave my piece in my video about like you don't actually like Tana Mojo. And I feel like that's where I have to leave it. Because I do want to talk about her. I do want to have conversations about the things that she's doing and why the young people watching her need to be aware of what's going on and and different things and for a while I really was rooting for Tana like when she did her video about how she fell in love with Jake Paul and he didn't want to be with her I'm like dang that sucks like I want to see her happy I want to see her better but she has every resource in the world available to her and she's still not taking care of the things that she needs to take care of so it does me no good and it does it doesn't do anybody else any good to continue to talk about her Karen said I haven't tweeted about Shane for a while and I like it that way okay and here's the thing that like not triggered but like flicked a light on in my head just now mentally <laughs> When we are able to move on from a fixation about a certain person, it feels so good because those people are going to do whatever they're going to do, whether you're talking about them or not. And so they're going to keep doing those things. Wait, let me take it back. That was worded wrong. Those people are going to do those things as long as we are talking about them. And so if we keep talking about them, they're going to keep doing those actions and then we're going to keep focusing on it and then they're going to keep doing it and it's going to be a constant like circle of infuriation. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word, but a, a circle of hyper focusing on this thing and getting really upset about it and really irritated every time they do something bad. And once you say, this is my opinion on this person, it's known I'm walking away and you don't focus on them anymore, you're going to feel so much relief it's great so it's good because it's better for your mental health and also it maybe it sends them the message of this is not the way to get the attention that they want Juggy vibes said it's weird how in tana's apology she, she said that one reason she uh that one reason was because the people she watched but the whole time it was shane right like, she totally threw him under the bus. <laughs> Ali Perez said, From an applied behavior analysis standpoint, withholding attention only works if the function of that person's behavior was to get attention. If they're trying to escape, you would encourage them. Yeah. So, that, like, that's a perfect example with Trisha. She wants the attention. And so once you stop talking about her, if we can get that to happen on a large scale, maybe we would see a change. Oscar said, I'm just ignoring Trisha at this point. She's doing it on purpose, and it isn't worth the energy. Exactly. Kaylarg said, it's the same with Gabby and Jeffrey. I'm just like, y'all can exist, and I don't need to hear about it. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly. Like, that's literally how I feel. It's like, you do you. I mean, we can only talk about the same pattern of behavior so much. Ooh, scrolling down. Christina said, circle of stress and regret. For real. Bob said, I feel icky when I watch Tana. I just know she isn't a good, good influence on society, especially the kids who watch her. Yeah. Dawson Lemon said, these people like Tana, uh, Jake, Ricegum, etc. have young audiences on purpose. That's evident by their meetups. Who else would fall for constant scam product promo and the 100th apology? Exactly. Tiaran said, uh, the young audience is heartbreaking. I remember Peter Mon talking about teachers commenting about how their middle school students look at the Tana. Ugh. The dark side, Boomer Melissa said, maybe it's my age, but I usually don't change my opinion on a creator. It's a rare thing for me. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's like if I legitimately see a change maybe I, I will like I'll keep an open mind I'm not gonna say I hate somebody for forever but it's like right now here's where I'm at that could change we'll see uh, but who knows Pamela said Gabby Jeffrey Shane Tana and Trisha are all the same in my book all extremely manipulative with their audiences 
Yeah, and Chris X, I didn't want to get too much into it, but since Oscar asked, are you talking about um, when they did a collab together and she sat on top of him and did a bodily function? <laughs> Whatever. We're talking about when she peed on him or are you talking about something else? Because I've never heard of um, doing explicit things with Tana when she was 17. Chrisic said, not specifically because yes, but also where she literally peed on Shane and that one where they got Shane in a dog cage. I'm pretty sure she was 18 at the time um, because that was the whole thing. That was like, oh, she's 18 now. We can do whatever. It's still weird for sure, but I truly hope she wasn't 17 at the time. I don't think she was or unless it was something else that came up. Kaylerg said, I see a change in James. Yes, yeah, sometimes he reverts back to some egotistical behavior, but it's not consistent anymore. As far as James goes, I don't keep up with him. I have I don't watch a ton of beauty gurus other than to keep up with the drama. Um, but <laughs> I do see him constantly putting his foot in his mouth and being like, non-beauty people shouldn't make beauty products. Hmm. <laughs> Kathleen H. said there was a lot of positive comments under Ryland's video about Shane, people admitting to missing him and asking he'd come back to YouTube. Uh, I, I saw a lot of people saying that their comments were like getting deleted and that the comments were being heavily moderated. Um, so I don't know about that, but I do believe that there are people who miss him. I think if you were somebody who watched him for a really long time, uh, it's probably a pretty natural thing. I just don't know that it's best for him to come back. Kaylin said, even if she was technically legal, she was still a kid. It was so creepy and felt very sexual. Yeah, that's true. I think I'm just like, at least, hopefully, at least they followed the law. Hopefully, at least we've got that. But yeah, when you think about the age difference between them, what, he's, uh, he was in his late 20s at least at that point. That's weird. And that's that's a whole other thing that I've been thinking about with a lot of the videos that I've been watching today is even if something is technically legal, it can still be very uncomfortable. And certain age gaps, I, I think age gaps are kind of complicated. And if people are on the same like mentality level, that's one thing. But when you are somebody who is, say... 27 wanting to date like a 19 year old yeah it's legal but it's also very interesting to me bob said do you think tana resents being friends with shane and idolizing him uh probably not i mean I think he did a lot for her when she was first coming up because he noticed her and, and brought her on his channel and he also did damage control for her after Tanacon. So I think hopefully she knows that he definitely did do a lot for her channel. But I think she's probably just throwing him under the bus because it's she thought it was going to be a good way to get people to forgive her. Dawson Lowe and Satana literally called Shane her father, right? Ugh. Good point, Chris X. Chris X said, legality doesn't equal morality. Exactly. Ava said, it's natural to miss him if he's someone you watched weekly. That's a parasocial relationship, but maybe don't voice that you miss him. Emotions are valid, but you don't have to say them publicly. Yeah. Courtney said, Garrett seems to have dropped Shane. Ryland's video was filmed on his birthday, and Garrett has spent a lot of time with just Andrew and their friends. I mean, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to be involved in that either. Count Von Wilson said, there's more than just age that factors into an uneven power dynamic, like Shane's huge influence on the platform. I never followed either of them, but that sounds gross, gross, gross. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... 
back to what we're talking about though i don't even know how we got to that point i do think at some point we have to not talk about people and i was watching a video by madison harnish i think her um oh my gosh i think her youtube name is cruel world happy mind she does a lot of like shady business practice videos and she was talking about this guy russell hartley who is basically somebody who thrives off negative energy i think we think well we think like i know her she said and i agreed <laughs> in my own head that he makes these videos for people to get mad at so that more people will learn about them and he can like sell his courses and she said you know he thrives off negative attention and i know that i'm giving him this negative attention right now but i need to talk about what he's doing and so yes there are certain things that we should talk about but i think when it gets to a certain point if you want to see the behavior stop either you have to stop paying attention to it or on a wide scale people have to cut it off you guys are talking about adam 22. <laughs> uh. TRN said, Tana also said she views Adam 22 as a father figure too, so I don't know a ton about, uh, but that's like uh, Adam and Lena, I think. Is that what you guys are talking about? Oscar said, TRN, the fact that she said that and then was in the room with him and his girlfriend. <laughs> Yikes. Brown said, just finished making the chili, so I'm going to go ahead and eat, but love the live and hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. I'm glad you're in here. Enjoy your chili. Okay, Lark said, isn't that what parents do? Put you in time out and then silent treatment till you behave? Yeah, if you're looking, like, if you're looking for attention, sometimes you just got to ignore the kid and say, we're not doing this right now. This is not okay. But moving on to the next thing. You guys, 40 minutes just flew by. Holy moly. I didn't know if we were going to be able to talk for this long about that. Mm. Oscar said she made a whole video about it, getting her reaction. I think it got deleted, though. That wouldn't surprise me if it got deleted. Rihanna said, uh, uh, Trisha and Lena and Adam had a threesome, too. It's like all the toxic people chilled together. Yikes. Okay, so next thing I wanted to talk about was everything. Not everything, but like... A, a brief combo about what's going on with Eugenia Cuny and I'm gonna say Eugenia like 30 times and every time I'm gonna worry that I'm saying it wrong so we're just gonna roll with it but essentially she's kind of in the news in the YouTube news for a few things right now there have been people coming out speaking about their experiences on her serve I think her discord servers I don't know if it's I thought it was Discord, but then I heard somebody else say it was Twitch. So I don't know. But essentially... Mm, yes. Thank you, Oscar. General twigger, tr trigger warning for Eugenia. The focus of the conversation is not going to be on her eating disorder. Uh, but obviously that pops up when you are talking about somebody with such a severe problem. So... It's not going to be about that, but also trigger warning for, I don't know, grooming for underage inappropriate relationships. So, um, essentially, Eugenia had known felons as some of her moderators, and they were harassing some of her underage fans at one point, and... The thing is, I don't think there's a problem with having, like, felons as friends or as moderators or whatever, but if you have them as moderators and you know that you have a lot of young fans, it might be good to get some more information about them and understand what their crimes were and what they've been accused of because you're putting them in a position of power in terms of your online presence and that's a whole thing about why I, at this point, I will never have 
like a Patreon or a Discord or anything like that, anything off of YouTube that is a place for the people who watch me because I understand that they can be very fun and it's a great way to maintain friendships within communities that you are involved in but it just gets so messy we have seen so much drama happen because of discord servers and so i think in some cases you're kind of asking for a problem to happen i know that kendall ray has one and i haven't heard anything bad happen about that she promotes it a lot but it can definitely happen and essentially a 14 year old in eugenia's server reached out to one of the moderators who has been accused of these things of how do we say it um like i i don't want to say it in a way that i'm like cleansing a language of like using words that don't actually have anything to do with what they mean um but he'd been accused of being a map essentially and he was harassing this 14 year old this 14 year old reached out to another moderator and said hey i'm being blackmailed and harassed by this same like by this moderator and the one that she reached out to for help was also accused of being a map and he did not help her like he didn't do anything to stop the harassment and then the 14 year old approached eugenia about it and said like I have to disappear for a while this is this is going on like I'm so scared I don't want you to forget about me but I can't be on the server anymore and I can't watch you anymore because this is happening and I have to go into hiding and Eugenia was nice to her and said hey if it gets too serious go to the police but she didn't zero in on anything else and the thing is uh in the first message that that 14 year old sent to eugenia she did not say that it, it was a moderator she said something is happening to me and i'm being blackmailed but she didn't specify who it was however if one of you like if anybody i think dm'd me and said that i think i would ask more questions because Eugenia's response was like, oh, it's okay if you have to stop watching me. Don't be afraid to go to the police. Everything will be okay. And that was it. She didn't ask any further questions, which I think is an important thing to do if somebody is coming to you saying that. Kayla said mods should never harass the people they're moderating. That seems counterintuitive. Exactly. Oscar said, yeah, Discord is great, but I understand the fear. Yeah, and, and like, that's the thing. I know that many people have had great experiences and, and they create really great friendships. Oh, no, you guys lost the stream. Oscar said it's good. Are y'all able to see? I know UA and TRN are both saying that there's a problem. Everything looks good on my end. Okay, yeah. Uh, refresh if you're having problems. Everyone else is saying it's good. I just pulled it up on my phone. And it's good too. So yeah, just refresh if you're having a problem. But let me know if, it's, if it persists. Um... Anyway, um, but yeah, like I said, you know, people have had really great experiences on Discord, but at the same time, I feel like if, if I were to create a platform, or in this case, Eugenia created a, a space on that platform for people who watch her, you are then responsible, essentially, for what happens there. Even if it's happening and you're not keeping an eye on it, even if you've just created it and said, here you go, like, this is where y'all can connect you still morally at least are responsible for what happens there you set up this place that these people in my opinion just my opinion if something goes wrong it's your responsibility to fix it because you created that space tyler said hey yeah hi tyler You guys talking about how Eugenia is too nice or too passive? 
Grana said, just my opinion, Eugenia is way too passive and avoids any confrontation to an excessive degree. She seems really sweet, but doesn't focus on the crux or danger of the issue. Yeah, Oscar said, oh, I like that culture, because Chris said, nice culture is detrimental to our society. Yeah. Chris said, people care so much about being nice with their fake woke mess without putting in actual work. That's just a bunch of pots and kettles yelling at each other. Yeah, and that's like what I've always said is, well, I haven't always said it, but a few years ago, I was just like having a conversation with all of my siblings and I said something about it and I was like, no, like I'm nice because we're messing with each other. And my sister said, I don't think you're nice, but I do think you're kind. And at the time I was so offended because I was like, how dare you? I'm a nice person. Why would you say that? But now I take it as one of the biggest compliments because nice doesn't mean anything. Nice means you're avoiding doing something hard. You can be kind and be respectful, but nice is kind of, you know, nice doesn't mean anything. Nice is insincere. You can be respectful, you can be kind, but nice, it just, at this point now, I get it. I'm like, yeah, I'm not nice, which is, which is good, <laughs> in my opinion. Oscar said, wow, she called you a Gemini. <laughs> Essentially. But yeah, like, Eugenia... And Jacqueline talked about this. Jacqueline Glenn talked about this in her video, too. Druggy Vibe said, don't understand why she continues to support so many bad people. Evie said, or Evie, sorry, I'm not sure how you say your name, if it's Evie or Evie, um, but said, Jacqueline said, Eugenia takes any criticism as people being mean, and that's not really okay because it leads to problems. Yeah. <laughs> Bob said my fourth grade teacher told us that using the word nice is equivalent to the F word and we shouldn't use it. Chris said it's a baseless word, essentially. But yeah, so anyway, she approached Eugenia about the problem that she was having about being blackmailed. Eugenia really didn't care. And at that point, other people started covering it like it's gotten out now these people were moderators eugenia made them moderators she didn't look into them and that's the whole point that i was saying is like when you have this space that you've created you should be responsible for knowing who is who is in there who is like being the gatekeeper and the rule enforcer and being a moderator in there because they have a lot of access to people of all ages like anybody could be in there and you just don't know and so shannon uh creep show art she made a really good video about it she was one of the first people i saw who really brought this to the light and then when people started calling eugenia out for it this goes into jacqueline glenn's video she's like that's you know she's like they were nice to me like they're nice guys they wouldn't do that and jacqueline made a good point i think because she said that Eugenia's mindset is very much, if somebody is nice to me, then they're a good person. If somebody criticizes me, they're a bad person. And so she didn't take accountability for it. She didn't take responsibility for allowing those people to have such power within the server, which I think she should have. And I do kind of think that, oh, it's Evie. Evie? Evie? Okay, yes. Short for Evelyn, Evie, that helps. It does. Um, I think people are very scared to criticize Eugenia sometimes because she can be, she can appear so fragile. And she always appears to be nice and to want to be nice and to be happy. And when it comes to this, because I saw somebody post something about how uh, you shouldn't criticize Eugenia for not taking accountability for having those men's those men as her moderators because having an eating disorder can affect your brain function. And I get that. But at the same time, if that's the case, if her brain function is limited because of an eating disorder, there need to be rules to counteract that. Something needs to happen to make up 
for that lack of whatever it is, that diminished brain function. I'm not going to sassy air quote. What I read, the diminished brain function because of her eating disorder. So people are asking for her page to be restricted. People are asking for young children not to be able to watch her videos or to be on her server or to engage in her content. And I agree because just because she doesn't see anything wrong with it doesn't mean that there's not something wrong with it. You know, there, the internet is kind of like the wild west, but in real life we have rules for things, you know? And, I, and the, I'm not trying to say this as an equivalency thing, but like if you have a person with diminished brain capacity or diminished brain function because of an eating disorder or something else and they require guardianship, they don't get to make certain decisions for themselves because of that diminished brain capacity. There are rules in the real world to counteract that and to keep them safe and to keep others safe. So if that's the case for Eugenia, YouTube, Discord, Twitch, people need to step up in order to protect other people. Okay, like I said, I think it's good to see the best in people in a lot of situations, but not when hiring people or assigning mods. You can't always be so neutral when you're running your own business. Yeah, like I, for me, I am somebody who very much, uh, I like to see the best in people. I like to give them the benefit of the doubt. You heard me earlier. I'm like, I don't want to label somebody as anything, but this is the behavior they're exhibiting. Like I, to a fault, I am like that. But when it comes to moderators who have such a piece of, like a place of power in an area that you've created, you need to know who you are working with. Like you need to know more information about them. It's like, even on here, even moderators on a, a YouTube stream, the only access they have as moderators, like here is to time people out or block them from a channel or like hide, delete a message. That's the power that they have. And even then I wouldn't make just anybody a moderator. I need to have seen you in my streams before. I need to have seen your comments before. We need to be like following each other on Twitter. So that way I know generally what you put out there and, and not necessarily that I know everything about you, but like I can have a good idea of the kind of person you are before I will ask. And so when it comes to a place where you have a lot more power, you got to know. Alex Willard said, this is exactly how I feel about kindness versus niceness. Yeah. Chris said, uh, also Eugenia made a post like it's not so hard to be nice and she knows what she's doing. I feel like she's also 26 and no matter what someone's got going on, they're so responsible for their actions. Oscar said, yeah, she should make her server 18 plus. Totally agree. Like, she, she's got to make it 18 plus for the safety of the people in there. Plus, you guys are talking about um, Eugenia's mom. And it's hard because I don't know what Eugenia's backstory is. I don't know if there's a reason she's 26 and still living with her mom. Like, does she have, even without the eating disorder, like, does she have some sort of diminished brain capacity or a mental illness or a disability that prevents her from understanding these things? Or is it that her mom is so over-controlling and she's been manipulated into believing the things that she believes? Or is it just that she wants to put on an act to avoid criticism? I don't know and I don't necessarily think it's my place to speculate but there are a lot of options of of what this could be Kaylark said i've been on disability juries uh where we decide if the person can take care of themselves without help i wonder if that would help but i struggle to take freedom from her because she acts coherent yeah uh bob's bob stein said she needs a caretaker not an abuser yeah Yeah. And the thing is, like, you know, she she could be a good candidate to have a conservatorship. And it, 
we wouldn't know. I mean, I think there are some people who seem to be coherent and seem to know what they are doing, but they function better in the real world when they have more direction or when they have somebody who is assigned to be their guardian or when they live with their parents if their parents are not abusive. It can be the right move for some people and so maybe that is more what she needs as opposed to whatever's happening right now. But if she's not going to either step up or people in her life aren't going to be able to accomplish that, YouTube needs to set some rules. Abby said, I think her mom is just very manipulative and possibly abusive, at least from what Jacqueline has said before. Yeah, I think so. Ava said, uh, uh, maybe her mom acts as a caretaker to make sure she eats meals and takes meals of herself and takes meals of herself. That would be my guess. And then Oscar said, Ava, her mom was, I was going to say, um, but then Ava said, maybe it might be better if it's not her mom. Yeah. If somebody else could come in and help, you know, that would be good. Oh, my streaming software stopped. Okay. We're back. Um, Abby said, and because of her ED, she needs someone around to take care of her, I think, so she can heal. Yeah, like something needs to happen if, if she cannot have, if she truly doesn't get, like the whole point of the conversation, if she truly doesn't get why having people who are accused of being MAPS as moderators, if she doesn't get why that's a problem, YouTube needs to step in. And Tiara said, YouTube, and I hate to say this is a terrible platform. I think it's part YouTube and part the fact that stuff like this is still kind of new. Uh, some of this is still, like, we don't have legislation that has caught up to YouTube. So there are so many rules that I would love to see enforced and so many laws that I would love to see enacted but it just hasn't happened yet. And so the law needs to catch up to what is happening. Bob Stein said, I love and hate YouTube. Right? Count Von Wilson said, it's a confusing situation because she's clearly so unwell and it's heartbreaking to see, but then Eugenia's presence could be so harmful online, adding these reprehensible mods, what a mess. That's exactly it. And then what I wanted to say about the Jacqueline Glenn situation is that Jacqueline put a video out saying, like, I see so many of you asking me to step in and help Eugenia because it doesn't seem like she's getting any better. She's getting into some trouble and I can't do anything. Like, she is still mad at me for what happened. She thinks that we did this, like we tricked her and we lied to get her into treatment because Jacqueline and some of her friends were responsible for calling in it's like a psychiatric evaluation team to come in and evaluate Eugenia and decide whether or not she was a danger to herself or not. And if she was, then they would take her in, whether she was voluntarily willing to go or not. And Eugenia is still very mad about that. And Katie Morton made it a completely irresponsible video about her recovery after she got out. Caitlin David said Katie Katie Morton is two faced. <laughs> Literally like we were you were in my brain. <laughs> Bob said just protect the kids at least. Right. Ava said people need to stop accepting maps as a sexuality. It's not I can't believe people get away with it. Most people have sense to call it out, but some don't. Yeah. Oscar said, I don't like Jacqueline, but I do think she really does care about Eugenia. Yeah, and, I, like, I think that Jacqueline's intentions were good. Like, I don't watch a ton of her content, but I've seen a few videos that she's done, especially on people like Paul and Morgan. Like, I find those kind of funny to watch. Um, but, like, I, either way, she was trying to help Eugenia. And Katie essentially gave her information on how she could help her, and then turned around and had Eugenia on her channel talking about how much she was ambushed by Jacqueline and friends. It's just ridiculous. 
Gaylord said, I have all the empathy in the world for her and her ED, but it crosses a line when other people could get hurt, you know? Exactly. You know, it's like, I don't want to see anybody get hurt, but if you're going to do whatever you're going to do, that's fine, but don't hurt somebody else. Like, don't bring other people into it. Count Von Wilson said, honestly, I disagree with Jacqueline on a lot, but in this case, she really did everything in her power to make a positive change at the expense of her friendship. She did the hard thing for the right reason. Yeah. Jordan said, yes, Katie absolutely needs to be exposed for trying to play both sides. That was so honestly ridiculous. And we've talked about this before from the moment I knew who Katie was because she was, this is all going to circle back to Shane Dawson. <laughs> the second that Shane Dawson brought her on his, his channel to secretly evaluate Jake Paul to see if he was a sociopath, I was like, that is a professional that I do not trust. That is a medical professional who should not be on YouTube and should not be practicing. Like, I do not trust her as far as I could throw her at all. Jordan said, medical professional, but I believe she is a divorce, uh, in divorce counseling, but don't quote me. Bob said, if so, Katie needs to have her medical license checked. For real, like she's a she's a therapist, I think. Uh, Ava said Kitty Morton is a couples therapist who abuses her title as a therapist slash doctor. Yeah, I mean literally, like it's kind of like the toned down, rewired soul, essentially. Like coming on here and saying if, if she does have a therapist license, if she doesn't coming on here saying like I'm a mental health professional listen to me and then being so incredibly irresponsible with it going undercover to diagnose Jake Paul is so messed up so messed up and then the fact that she uh helped Jacqueline get Eugenia into treatment and then as soon as Eugenia got out had her on her channel and was like they really did ambush you huh it's traumatizing so dumb yeah courtney <laughs> courtney said isn't katie also the one who gave shane the diagnosis of being an empath yeah karen said oh my god i just thought of the rewired soul too <laughs> right it's it's just ridiculous but in any case Jacqueline said like go talk to Shane like I can't do anything about this Eugenia won't talk to me it was super awkward she was on a twitch stream and somebody pretended to be Jacqueline and like did an apology and it, it was so uncomfortable to watch like it was it it was so uncomfortable I don't like watching awkward things I don't like watching cringeworthy things Remember, like, six months ago, a video of Dakota Johnson, I think that's her name, came out on Ellen, like, oh, Dakota calling Ellen out, like, so many people were sharing it, and I couldn't, I haven't watched it still, because I hate awkwardness and cringe that much, but, like, literally watching the fake apology from Jack, from Jacqueline, from somebody pretending to be Jacqueline to Eugenia was so uncomfortable. It's just wrecked. Jordan said, Oscar's our babysitter. <laughs> and Kayla said, is being uh, an empath even a thing? Like, there are movies I can't watch because it's too uncomfortable to see people being embarrassed, but I don't want to think I'm an empath. Like, what even is that? I mean, my kind of idea of what an empath is like I think I think that being an empath is a legitimate thing but I also think that people learned about the word empath and now everyone's adopting it because they're like I'm sensitive I'm an empath like I don't think that there are as many empaths in the world as people who are claiming to be empaths it's kind of like um people who are like energy healers or people who can read your aura I think that this is purely my personal opinion and belief system i think those things do exist but i also think that a lot of people think that they have those abilities and run with it k 
too, and so I'm not like other people. I'm an empath. Right. Ali said, empath is a genuine psychology term. It has a different colloquial definition. And then Kelly said, no, being an empath is not a thing. Eh. Who knows? Krizik said, Shane Dawson, an empath that made multiple videos on stalking slash causing harm to Taylor Swift and sued her uh, when she got his videos about getting stalked and killed taken down. Yeah, yikes. Also, if that comment interests you, Krizik did make a video about the whole Shane Dawson, Taylor Swift issue and Taylor getting stalked and all that stuff. It's really good. So if you want to watch it, go over there after we're done here. Mm, Taryn said there's a difference between being an empath uh, and an empathetic person. Yeah. You anyway, said, she said some of y'all learned the word empath and hasn't shut up since. Essentially. Shane is neither. Kaylin said, need more details. What was the channel again? Taylor versus Shane. It's Chrisix. It's I know I'm saying it, Chrisix, and that's why you're confused. It's X R Y X I X. Who's been in the chat? They have a channel. Jordan said, "My dog died, and I'm sad. I'm such an empath." <laughs> you guys are funny, but yeah, I mean that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. I Kelly said, who knows, I'm licensed, I know it's not a thing. I didn't know that you were licensed when I said that, but at the same time, I don't know, like, that's great that you're saying that it's not, I'll look into it further, but at the end of the day, for me, I think there are people who have an ability to be empathetic, but I don't know that it's something you can be diagnosed with. Like, I think having an empathetic personality and feeling how other people feel, being able to understand a shift in energy with somebody is a thing, but I don't, like, I don't think you can be diagnosed with it, and if you're saying that you can't, eh, I guess you can't. Courtney said, what we've learned today, none of us are nice and none of us seem to be empaths. <laughs> uh. Caitlin said, thanks guys, this is my first time joining a live stream and it's been really cool chatting with y'all. Yay, I'm glad that you had a good time your first time in here. I love that. Brianna said, it's a spirituality thing. My little sister has some Wiccan beliefs and calls me an earth angel. It's sweet. Oh, that's so nice. That's so cute. But yeah, that was pretty much what I wanted to talk about. Oh, I wanted to ask you guys this. So... Moving on to uh, future content. So next week, obviously, I'm posting part two of the video about Without a Crystal Ball, a.k.a. Katie Joy. But at the same time, I'm thinking about future com content coming up. And have you all seen the talk about that movie, Cuties? Is that something you would want a video about or like a, a discussion about I mean I think we can all probably agree that it's gross but I mean it's on Netflix still it's up on Netflix so if you guys want to talk about that we can or since there's not really a ton going on with YouTube drama I was also thinking about maybe looking into like Tony Robbins and seeing if he's shady or if he's not Oscar said, I don't know what that is, but I'm down. And then Tiara said, let's not talk about cuties. <laughs> it's essentially a... <laughs> it's a movie that's on Netflix right now about an 11-year-old who joins a twerk dance team to rebel against her parents. But the, the promo pictures and the promo videos are extremely graphic for an 11-year-old in my opinion, and I've only seen, like, a 20-second clip of it. Yeah, Courtney said cuties from what I've heard of. Oof. <laughs> right, like, it's very uncomfortable to see, and I want to know, yeah, Oscar said, oh, and also that name. Like, the promo pics, never mind, I won't share them on my stream, um, but, like, the girls are in little crop tops, like, not even, like, 
cute age appropriate crop tops although 11's kind of young for that but but anyway like they're up here like little crop tops and little booty shorts and these girls i don't know if they're actually 11 in real life but they look very young and they're like on a stage i saw a video of them dancing and I'm, i want to know whose parents said that this was okay we all know that Hollywood is full of shady people and sketchy people who are gonna be like, oh yeah, like not to not to be a stereo like be stereotypical, but like Hollywood, there are pedophiles in Hollywood, so I'm not surprised that this movie got made. But like, whose parents let these kids be in this? And also, it's supposed to be a female director, and you thought that this was okay? Danielle said, I couldn't make it to 10 seconds of the cuties clip. It was gratuitous. It was gross. Like, I don't know. Why couldn't she join, like, a hip-hop dance squad to rebel against her parents? There were so many other things that they could have made this about if it's really about rebelling against your conservative parents. She could have joined so many other activities. <laughs> Not a twerk team. At 11. Taryn said the movie was produced in France, which seems to be worse than Hollywood. France is interesting in, in that regard, for sure. Rihanna said, Netflix's stock is dropping today because my Republican friends think they are all chomps. There's, there are unfortunately Hollywood pedos, but I don't think it's a grand scheme. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's like a... A calculated thing but you know s sketchy stuff gets made and it's because sometimes people who make it are not the best people Ava said I read it was uh, by an immigrant woman who wanted to make a video about the sexual exploitation in it and Netflix picked up the most sexual picture and it wasn't meant to be huh Chris said like predators protect predators they didn't have to do this Right. And I just, I don't know how they thought that they were going to get a good response from this. I mean, most, most people, if not all people, should look at that and say, this is not okay. Charlotte said Netflix translated it as a twerk team, but it's just a hip hop group. Uh, not from the video I saw. Like, uh, Charlotte also said it's a semi-biographical work by a Muslim African woman. Eh. Okay, because you guys are talking about how, like, oh, I heard it was just, like, a confusion in the marketing thing. Like, it's really just a hip-hop group. It's not a twerk team. It was originally, from what I remember, described as a twerk team. People got mad. They changed it to a hip-hop group, and they were like, no, you guys. Like, no, it's not inappropriate. It's fine. It's just, you know, yada, yada, yada. But I saw a clip from it on Twitter and it looked like a twerk team to me. And even if they're labeling it as like a hip hop group or a dance group or a dance troupe, the dances that the 11 year olds were doing are 1 million percent inappropriate. It's just, it's, it's not even a matter of like, I don't think an 11 year old should be allowed to express himself that way. It's that dance like that in your room if you want, but if you're putting it on the internet for, if you're putting it on Netflix, for anybody to see, I would not want anyone to see my kid dancing like that at that age. Mm. No way. Taryn said the director had a good idea, but it was ex executed horribly. The dance routines are gross. They're literally dragging their hands down their bodies, accentuating secondary sex organs, if we're being <laughs> politically correct about it. Sinead said the French trailer looked quite good. It was just, uh, it was kind of like a preteen film. I think the idea is great. You know, somebody raised in a really conservative household wants to like go out and like find who they really are outside of the, like being under the thumb of their parents. Great. Like, I love that. That's a great idea. But 11 year olds in spankies and a very short crop top dancing that way is just interesting. But anyway, the point was 
I was thinking, you know, maybe that one clip is like taken out of context. I don't know how it could be taken out of context, but maybe overall there's a good message or there's a good theme. So if y'all wanted, I could watch it and do a video about it. Chris said the critics gave it a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, but the public gave it five. Mm. And he said, well, my dinner homework break is over, so I'm going to do more homework, but I'm glad I could watch so much of this. I'm glad that you were able to be here for a lot of it, too. Have fun doing your homework. Chris said at least most people have sense. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that the critics gave it 90%. But the question was, <laughs> before we got into all of this, was would you rather I watch the movie and tell you if any parts of it are good or redeemable, or look into potentially Tony Robbins, see if somebody is, I was trying to think of like a name for the series. Cause I feel like it's kind of, you know, I did Rachel Hollis and then I did without a crystal ball. And so I'm trying to think of like a catchy name of like shady or I need, I need an S word. That means like they're on the up and up. I don't know, but let me know, put it in a comment or say neither and give me another suggestion. <laughs> Of something else you would like. Sinead said, this is the thing. Netflix definitely marketed it to the wrong audience. It was something an 11 or 12 year old would watch. Yeah. I don't know. I just think. Change it up a little bit. Change the costumes. Change some of the dance moves. It could be a really cool thing for an 11 or 12 year old. But. I don't know. Pop said stinky or sweet. <laughs> Or six cents sus. Yeah, so I need like shady or I don't know. Like lying or legit. Fraudster or friend. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. If you think of anything good, let me know. But y'all really don't have an opinion on which you would rather see. I want to put out stuff that you guys like, so. If you don't have an opinion right now, feel free to leave it once this gets processed and is available on the channel. Mmm. Oscar said friend or fraud. I think that's a good one. I just like the word shady. <laughs> Tuz McPhee said on the, I'd honestly be happy with both. Count Von Wilson said honestly I'm interested in both, but that's never helpful. No, it is, because the thing is, like, if y'all were like, we're, we don't care about cuties at all, it's gross and we're not interested, I would just cut it out. Um, but in my head, my next kind of series as of now was going to be looking into Tony Robbins. I've watched his documentary. I have mixed feelings on him, so I don't know what the end result of that would be, but that's kind of something that is like, it's not dependent on a timetable. Like I could talk about Tony Robbins tomorrow or I could talk about him in two months and there wouldn't be any new information really unless like a bombshell happened. But with Cuties, it's like it just came out. So it's relevant to right now. So that's just what I was thinking. Okay, you guys said, I don't want to watch the movie so I'd love to hear someone else talk about it. If I see Penguin said... I'm interested. Uh, Chris said, honestly, I'd like to know your thoughts, but watching it, probably not. I feel like that's the basis of my channel is like, <laughs> I'll watch stuff that you don't want to watch and tell you what you need to know. Okay. Chris said, whatever. Honestly, I appreciate your lives. Thank you. Pamela said, it won an award from Cannes, so I'm interested. Wow. Oscar said, watch it and give it one star. Ali said, I haven't really heard the opinion of someone who watched the movie, so it would be interesting. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. I'm like, I honestly don't know if watching the, uh, watching the movie would change my opinion because of that one clip I saw. Like, I don't know if they could make it right with anything else in the movie, but it would be interesting to see for sure. So, Taryn said, Can also awarded Roman Polanski last year. Well, that doesn't surprise me. But, okay, cool. So that's probably what we're going to plan on. I have to just decide when I can actually sit down and watch it and take notes on it. So that'll be interesting, but cool. 
We just said shady or sleek. Ooh. All good ones to ponder on. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much for all of the comments on this stream. I love, like, in the chat. I love when you guys have tons of opinions. I know it makes it kind of hard for me to keep up sometimes, but... Like, I love seeing you guys interact with each other and have thoughts on what we're actually talking about because it feels like we're all actually talking together. So I really do enjoy that. But thank you again for watching. Please be kind to people. <laughs> Not nice, but kind. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, you guys. Bye.